My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with AV Ultra, and today we're going to be talking about using the multipoint mass tracker for logo removal in After Effects. What am I talking about when I'm talking about a four point tracker or a multipoint tracker? Well, as you can see in our footage here, I have a fairly popular motorcycle company that's uh, actually just down the road from where I work. And what we've done is replace part of their logo here to, you know, one of my other favorite motorcycles, the Exciter bike. Um, comes with every Nintendo circa 1988, I think. So how do I go about tracking this and removing the original logo? Well, let's start looking at the original piece of footage here. So I'm just gonna open up my original piece of footage and here's what we've got. You can see Harley Davidson and what I wanna do is track this so that way I can remove it. I have a couple different options and for today what, we're, what I wanna do is just do a four point tracker since I have a nice solid area in which to track, very geometric, very uh, pretty easy in this particular case, but if I had something else like, say, this UPS over on the side here, I could do the same kind of thing, just kind of draw out a rectangle. And we're going to take a look at the tracking tools built into After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started. I have created a new composition out of my original piece of footage here. And here is what I've got. Now, how do I go ahead and track this? Well, you'll notice I don't really have a track button up here, but what I can do is right click on my footage here and I can track motion. So what I did here is I just right clicked. I went to the very bottom of my menu here and here I have track motion. Now I can also get to there from going into my window and going into a tracker panel. We actually have a whole panel dedicated just to tracking. And what I have to do if I wanna actually track this piece of footage is I actually have to open it in its layer property. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close out this composition property and leave me with just the layer property. All right, so I have this zoomed into about 200% here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this into view. And I'm gonna go to the very beginning of my timeline just so that way I have a clean, easy place to track from. In reality, what I want to do is if I have one particular frame that looks better or cleaner and it's going to be easier to track, I might want to start with that so that way I can kind of generate as few keyframes as possible. But for our purposes here, I want to go ahead and just track it from the very beginning. And what I'm going to do now is hit track motion. And as soon as I hit track motion, I'm given this little track point. So we have a search area, we have a region of interest, and we have a track point. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drag that guy right to the inner corner of that logo, okay? And so what this is going to do is if I just track this forward, and I'll go ahead and I'll do that here, I'll just, and I'm just gonna make a little bit of room here so I can analyze that track forward. So what I can do is just hit analyze forward and what it's gonna do is try to hold on to that specific point. What it's looking for is in this box here, it's looking from frame to frame to see if it can find that same pixel alignment. So in this particular case, I can see that there's a bunch of gray and black and so there's a lot of high contrast in there. And if I go ahead and I play that back, I should have that track point holding onto there fairly well. You can see all the different keyframes that it's moved. All right. Now, if I just go ahead and I try to replace the logo with this, it's only gonna have one point, which means I'm only gonna have a big square here. And that's all that it's attaching to. In fact, let's do that. So I'm just gonna go back into this and we're gonna create a new solid. So I'll just hit Command Y or uh, control Y if you're on a PC. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make this just, let's say 400 by 200 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... so now that I've created that solid, which we can only see in my composition here, I'm back in my layer, I want to apply that tracking data 
to my gray solid. And I hit edit target, we'll say okay. And then we've got to apply, whoops, hit the wrong button there. So I've added my target and I wanna pull this up just a little bit more so you guys can see it here, it says apply. And it asks me, what do I wanna apply? Well, I wanna apply my X coordinates and my Y coordinates, so I'll hit okay. So what it's done is it's definitely on that spot, it's holding that, but the perspective's all off. Well, I'm only using a single point, so I don't necessarily have perspective. I need to use more than one track point. So I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna delete, reset all my different things here. And instead of doing a transform, you'll notice I wanna do something called a perspective corner pin. And when I click on perspective corner pin, I actually have four track points open up. And so if you think about that, well, that makes a lot of sense. Imagine like, you know, if you're sitting in front of a TV and you get up and you walk away from it or from a monitor, your perspective of it changes. It's not a flat uh, rectangle or square if uh, you still have an old TV. It is, um, it's moving and it's changing shape. Just like we just saw in that last piece of footage I had. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just aligning these four different points to my edges here. And I am pretty far in here, and I'm not at the beginning or at the end of my track necessarily. I'm kind of smack dab in the middle. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to analyze forward and backward. And let's take a look at this here. So if I analyze this forward, that does an okay job. In fact, it's slipping just a little bit as I'm going through here, because there's a, quite a bit of camera shake. Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit here and see if I can move this guy. All right, so I can see that those points are moving a little bit. And then as soon as I get to that point where I stop tracking it, you'll notice that it kind of falls off. So I'm just gonna pick one of these points here and I'm gonna analyze it in the other direction. And so to do that, I just go to my analyze and I'll track backwards. All right. Now at the very end there, you can see that it really kind of freaked out. And to be honest, that's, that's sometimes just what happens. So I have my track in here and then it kind of loses momentum here. It kind of freaks out, doesn't know where it is. And that's okay, because what I can do is actually go in here and then go in frame by frame at a time. So I'm just gonna go back until I start seeing it lose its track. So like right here, I can see my first point, my fourth point are off, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it back into place. And instead of just letting it analyze, analyze backwards, I'm gonna analyze one frame at a time. For whatever reason, I have better luck with analyzing one frame at a time. I might go and just have it analyze all at once right away. Uh, but then I usually have to go back and clean up my track. So it's a lot easier for me if I just go one at a time in this situations like this. So I've reached the very beginning. And then I'm just going to go forward again and just double check, check these. Now, every time I hit the Analyze button, it's actually writing new keyframes. So if I don't want to do that, I can just go and hit uh, Page Up and Page Down. And I can just preview it one frame at a time. I can see in this particular case, my track point three here is slipping quite a bit. And in here, I might want to say, OK, I want to go ahead and we're going to just adjust that guy here and just adjust them. And so the reality is if you want a really good track, you're gonna be doing this by hand quite often, okay? So now what can we do with this? So we've got this perspective corner pin. Uh, and so we wanna apply that to our solid. And I'm gonna show you an issue that we might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit my target. We're gonna edit to that pale gray says there's some magenta in there, and that, that, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. All right. And we can see there's quite a lot 
of different stuff going on here. First of all, you can see my original piece of footage in my composition, and it has tracker in there, and one, two, three, four, and a keyframe on every single one of those. And then what that has done is automatically put on a corner pin effect on my solid and animated each one of those points. Right? And so I'm just going to play this back, and let's see what this looks like. I'm going to click off of here just so I don't have all those keyframe paths, and I'm just going to zoom this in right here. And actually, let's zoom out just a little bit more so we can see exactly what's going on, and I'll play that through. And for the most part, that's pretty good. I'm noticing a little bit of slipping right in this edge here as I play that back. Looks like some of it's getting eaten a little bit. Could I get away with this? Yeah, probably. I feel pretty good about this. So what I can do is I can just change the color of this solid. And let's just take the eyedropper and make it the same color as this background here. And that's pretty good. I've now removed that logo from my piece of footage. But now, what if I want to put in a new logo in that piece of footage? Well, I have a couple different ways I can do that. I can go ahead and put in some text. So if I try doing that right here, so if I just hit Command-T and I place in some text, right, that's very large text here, and it's really stretched out. I can probably apply the same thing to this, but what's going to happen with my corner pin effect is it's going to take the very top of this T, cram it in there, the very bottom of this whole area and cram it in there, and it might stretch it and skew it a little bit. So what I tend to do is work a little bit more procedurally, and by that I mean I'm going to remove this text, and I'm actually going to pre-comp this solid, and I'm going to call this uh, sl blank slate with text. All right, and now I'm going to go into there, and in here I'm just going to put the name of whatever logo I'm, I want to call it. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, Mountain Bikes. How about that? I like the sound of that. And I'll go back into my composition, and you'll notice there it's not lined up completely perfect. And so why is that? Well, if you remember, our solid was only 400 by 200 pixels. And this text layer is going to be smaller than that. So realistically, this is only a few hundred pixels large. So instead of trying to make something that would fit into here, instead, what I want to do is actually, and I just removed out that whole solid, I'm going to make a solid the size of my whole piece of footage here. So I'm just going to make that comp size, 1920 by 1080. And here, I'll go ahead, I already have my track points. I'll go to my tracker panel, and I'm going to go ahead, my perspective corner pin, edit my target. We're going to place it on that black solid, and... I'll have to scoot this up a little bit and apply. And now you'll notice that my solid that was 19, 19, uh, 1920 by 1080 is now shrinked down. So it is basically grabbing that corner and cramming it into that track point, grabbing this bottom left corner and putting it into that track point, and so on. So now what I want to do is I want to pre-comp just my black panel here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and extend him out to make sure he fills my whole timeline there. So there he is, pretty well attached into there. And I'm going to pre-comp him. And the reason being is because I just want him separate. Okay, So there he is. He's all by himself there. I'm going to extend that out to, I come back to my original composition. And there we have our black solid. And then here is inside my black solid. I'm going to scale this down and then write directly in here. So I want to fill up this whole frame because that whole frame is going to get squished down to meet those different points. So let's call this uh, Swanson. I'm going to go ahead and put him right there. 
And what I want to do is I want to fill them with our text tools as much as possible. I don't really want to stretch them using this because what that's going to do is rasterize things a little bit more than I need to. But what I want to do is just kind of affect them here. Now to fill the whole frame, I'm going to have to use, I'm going to have to use some of these to stretch them out. So I'm going to vertically scale it quite a bit here. And now when I go back to my composition, I can see what it's happened is it's perfectly aligned it. Again, why? Because I had that 1920 by 1080 and it has squeezed those corners down to fit in that box. So then if I extend this out all the way to the edges, well, that's gonna be working out perfect for me. All right. So now if I just wanna go ahead and fix that text, I might just want to take that text in here and make it a little bit more gray. But now I can animate this text separately. I can have it kind of come in. I can do all the, all kinds of different things to it, and it's separate from the rest of my composition. So hopefully you can see how using a four-point tracker here and a perspective track can help you replace logos or remove logos.